a little bit of prying there <laughs> and there we go we can see the electronics underneath the cap here it was particularly hot if you can see the display there it's over 50 degrees centigrade Hello folks and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Today, lithium ion in AA cells with battery management circuitry built in in order to reduce the voltage down to 1.5 volts. Let's get some of these things apart, let's test them and let's see how they perform. So we have three different brands of these AA lithium cells to have a look at here. 10 volts, which claim to have 2,775 milliwatts worth of power in them. We have EBLs, which claim to have 3,300 milliwatt hours of power in them. And then we have Kratax, uh, which claim to have 3,500 milliamps worth of power in them. So let's get these boxes open and let's have a play with some of these AA cells. So straight off the bat then, Kratax, here we are. So these are Amazon recommended. They come with their own little charging mechanism and you clip them in place just like that. A bit like an old fashioned sort of battery charger. And it's a USB-C powered, so USB-C port there, which plugs into a standard five volt style USB plug. I'll go ahead and fully charge those. We'll see if they adhere to the performance advised by the manufacturer, which is 3,500 milliwatt hours. Next, EBL. What we have here is we have little tiny USB ports in each one of these batteries. And what you do is you plug your USB cable into the battery, just like that. And the USB cable has a set of four connectors on it. And again, just plugs straight into a five volt USB type port. We'll get those on the test machine and we'll see how they perform. Finally, 10 volts. 10 volts come with a covered USB charger. And in here we have normally four 10 volts, two are in use at the moment. Four 10 volts with 2,775 milliwatt hours of power in them. And again, a micro USB style cable that plugs into a standard five volt USB port. We'll get these all on charge and we'll see how they perform. So during testing, it's a shame to know that one of these 10 volts decided it was going to stop working. Let's have a look. This one is producing a zero volts. And when we grab an EBL, 1.5 volts. And let's grab a Kratax, 1.5 volts. So Kratax seem to be holding up, EBL seem to be holding up, but 10 volts after two charges have just stopped working. Having plugged these guys in, we can see here that one of them is definitely charging and the other one is definitely not charging. Let's just pop them out and get that meter on the go again. This 10 volts is showing a zero, absolutely nothing, zilch, nada. Whereas this 10 volts here, yes indeed, is now taking a charge, showing 1.5 volts. So clearly we have a one 10 volt battery that is quite sick. So having had the broken 10 volts battery in its charger for just a few minutes, it was particularly hot. If you can see the display there, it's over 50 degrees centigrade, halfway towards boiling. Let's take it to the shed and take it apart. So as you can see, I've brought the battery to the shed and sadly, the temperature appears to be going up. It looks as though this battery, or certainly the electronics inside it, seem to be stuck, just causing the battery to continue to heat up. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about doing this, if I'm completely honest with you. In fact, ow, that is incredibly warm now. Something's definitely gone wrong with this 10 volts battery. <laughs> so the battery construction appears to be a metal can 
uh, this section here, which has all the lithium ion inside of it. And then there's a little bit of active electronics that sits at the top here in this cap close to the negative terminal. And that bit of active electronics in the end cap of the battery here is a battery management circuit. Gives you the ability to be able to charge the lithium ion cell inside here. And also, buck converts the output voltage from 3.6 or 4.2 volts, whatever the lithium ion cells outputting, down to 1.5 volts. But this is really, really quite hot at the moment. Contrary to the instruction manual, <laughs> I can't help but take this apart. First things first, I'm gonna put on some safety goggles. I'm gonna get myself a pair of pliers. Ouch, that's so hot. Right, okay, I'm gonna leave that for a little while to cool down before I start trying to get it apart. A little bit of prying there. <laughs> and there we go. We can see the electronics underneath the cap here. As we can see there, we can see the uh, active electronics in the cap. And there's a couple of microchips in there, an LED, some capacitors and some resistors. Right, let's get inside this thing a little bit more. Using a pair of pliers like a tin opener, opening this can of spam here. So this is the active electronics then. This is the battery management and the DC buck converter right here. And then we've got a little ribbon cable which connects to a lithium ion battery pack. So a little bit of gentle tugging and I've been able to remove the entire contents of the battery from its steel shell. And this here then is the lithium ion cell. Quite a neat little design. It's a shame it went wrong. I'm sort of happy that I pulled it apart to figure out how it all worked. <laughs> so looking at that battery through the magnifying glass, we can see here that it says 3.7 watt hours and over here it says 3.7 volts. So there we have it. That's the beast. All right, folks, let's put this to bed. Which of these batteries is the best and which batteries actually meet manufacturer's recommendations? What we've got here then is an IMAX B6, a battery charger, conditioner, monitor, discharger, tester, amazing piece of kit. They're only about a tenner on eBay. Well worth it. They take care of all of your lithium ion requirements, your lead acid requirements. And also in this case, I'm going to treat these batteries as though they were nickel cadmium batteries, which is sort of typical for 1.2, 1.5 volt batteries. So we're putting them on discharge test. We're going to discharge it um, for half an amp and we're going to discharge it all the way down to 0.1 of a volt. And off she goes. So you can see here then the amount of time that's elapsing here is DSC, the current that's being consumed from the battery, 0.5 amps, the voltage that the battery is providing. And then down in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see how many milliamp hours worth of current is being dissipated into the charger. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that for all three batteries, the Kratax, the tenor volts and the EBLs. And I am going to talk you through some pictures right now because clearly you have to wait quite a long time for this to finish its job. Having completed the testing, I have scribbled down the results. So the Kratax came in at top of the list. The Kratax manufacturer's specifications suggested they would achieve 3,500 milliwatt hours. The test results were given to us in milliamp hours, and all we have to do is multiply that by the voltage. In the case of Kratax, 
we had to do two sets of tests because there was a timeout on the analyzer. So we ended up with 2,127 milliamp hours, which works out if you multiply it by 1.5 volts as 3,190 milliwatt hours. So about 300 shy of the 3,500 milliwatt hours that was advertised by the manufacturer. So as far as tenovolts go, they came in second place, but please remember that I did get one that didn't work at all, which was quite amusing. Tenovolts manufacturer's guidelines suggest that you get 2,775 milliwatt hours out of these batteries. In my case, I got 1,733 milliamp hours multiplied by one and a half volts, which gives us 2,599 milliwatt hours. So again, a little shy by about 176 milliwatt hours. EBL, on the other hand, came in last place with their manufacturer's specifications showing 3,300 milliwatt hours. We got 1,576 milliamp hours out of it multiplied by 1.5 volts gives us 2,364 milliwatt hours, nearly a thousand milliwatt hours off of what was expected. I wonder if the reason behind that is because they can't fit as much lithium in here because they have a charge port as well as electronics. It would be interesting to take some of these apart and see how much actual lithium is in these devices. Anyway, as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Take care, have a wonderful week and weekend. Please give us a good old thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers and biz, people. Take care. Bye.